If you've got a fantasy draft coming up on ESPN or even Yahoo, NFL, CBS, any of those platforms, this video is going to be super helpful to you, okay? We're going to be talking about eight running backs that you need to snipe your idiot league mates on. And what I mean by that is I've compiled the data from paid fantasy football leagues. So platforms like Underdog, platforms like FFPC, which are high stakes leagues. And I've looked at their ADP, so average draft position. I'm looking at where running backs are being drafted on these high stakes platforms, and I've compared them to the ESPN ADP, where they are currently being drafted on ESPN, and we're looking at the biggest gaps, meaning you should probably jump over the ESPN ADP and snipe your league mates on these guys, because people that are paying to draft right now on those underdogs, FFPCs, Best Ball 10 platforms are staying on top of news. They're staying on top of training camp stuff. They're staying on top of preseason snap counts, goal line stuff. They're staying on top of it, all right? And I'm going to deliver to you the players that are completely mispriced on ESPN. We're also going to do this video for Yahoo specifically and then flip it. Guys that are going way higher on Yahoo or ESPN, that you should let your idiot league mates draft, okay? So those are the next four videos we're ripping off. All right, don't know what to do. Talk like some. Let's eat. At the end of this video, because we've got some preseason football tonight, preseason football tonight, we are going to give you my favorite bet for the New England Patriots Philadelphia Eagles game. But let's get to the running back list. All right. The number one highest drafted player in terms of rankings on paid leagues as opposed to ESPN is Chase Brown, the Cincinnati Bengals running back. He is 11 spots higher. 11 spots higher on paid platforms. And I think the reason being is Chase Brown is a relatively unknown player, right? Joe Mixon leaves. The only headlines people see are that the Bengals drafted Zach Moss. Some people on ESPN might not even know that Joe Mixon went over to the uh, Houston Texans. But Chase Brown is a relatively good size. He's about 5'10", 210, really explosive back that started to play a lot down the stretch last year. And now you have a ton of training camp hype where Chase Brown's been taking a ton of work with the ones and the starters. And uh, he just has a lot of upside relative to a dude like Zach Moss, who doesn't really have breakaway speed, who doesn't offer a ton outside of just kind of being above average everywhere where Chase Brown's athleticism profile does scream a lot of upside in a really, really high upside offense. Obviously, if Joe Burrow can stay healthy, Jamar Chase can get on the field, T Higgins can stay healthy. This is an offense that's going to move the ball and give their running backs a ton of opportunities. So Chase Brown, Zach Moss, 1A, 1B. I think Brown has the upside to be the guy that ends up getting the majority of touches in a very high-powered offense. He could play on all three downs. He can catch passes. We saw in the first preseason week one game, he played all 13 snaps with Joe Burrow. So Burrow was on the field for a couple drives. Chase Brown did not come off the field. Now, Zach Moss was hurt, so he didn't play. But it was good to see that he didn't come off the field in like two and four minute drills or third and long plays for like a Travion Williams, or they didn't have another running back that they wanted to come in and pass block for Joe Burrow. Cause sometimes those types of players can be really annoying for fantasy upside, but they clearly trust Chase Brown a lot. So Chase Brown is a dude that you need to be sniping your league mates on, on ESPN. Next dude up on this list is Ray Davis, the Buffalo Bills rookie running back. Now he was a fourth round pick and I'm not super high on Ray Davis. I comped him to Mike Davis. If you guys remember Mike Davis, Mike Davis was like a bigger back who also just did everything a little bit above average, right? You need him to run the ball up the middle and not fuck up. He could do that for you. You need him to be in on third downs and catch passes. He could do that for you. But he's a little bit of like a plotter. He doesn't have a ton of upside. He ain't going to break away, nothing like that. And that's how I look at Ray Davis. I think he's a good football player. He's going to be 25 years old this year, which is insane for a rookie. I just think people probably don't know Ray Davis, and that's why he's being drafted really low on ESPN. I will say... I'm not a fan of this pick. I'm going to go through and give you the numbers of who's getting drafted higher. This is not necessarily just a, a, a list that I think you need to like go up and actually snipe all these players, but I'll give you the ultimatum at the end of each player of whether or not I would. Ray Davis is probably falling on the side of I'll let someone else take him because even if Ray Davis does get the big back work in Buffalo, James Cook is going to lead that backfield in touches, probably, probably double any other running back back there. And then you're still left with the same problem of on the goal line, 
they're probably not giving it to one back. It is mostly Josh Allen down there. And I will say Ray Davis has kind of like secured the RB2 role, but only because Ty Johnson has been out of training camp with an undisclosed injury for a little bit. But as soon as he's back, I could see that being a little bit of a committee. So I'm not super high on Ray Davis, but neither is anyone on ESPN. So if you want to get a little bit of a handcuff, maybe a little bit of a high upside guy, if James Cook, smaller back, gets hurt, Ray Davis would probably get himself a big workload in a really good offense. Number three on this list, Rico Dowdle. He is going seven spots higher on high stakes leagues than he is on ESPN in particular. Now, I've talked a lot about the Dallas Cowboys backfield. I'll put this chart up, just the overall opportunities in this backfield over the last three years has been insane between Zeke and Tony Pollard. Now, I've also been on record that I really like Zeke. I really like both of these guys. You're talking about an offense, an NFL team that averaged the single most points per game last year with nothing but opportunity in the backfield. There's going to be at least one, probably multiple running backs that eat back here. And while I like Zeke, I think he'll be the goal line back. People in Dallas really like Rico Dowdle. You have a Dallas beat reporter from The Athletic said Rico Dowdle has to be the favorite to lead the Cowboys in rushing. He's also cheaper than Zeke, so I absolutely understand. And I want to leave my draft, I want to leave every fantasy draft with one of these two players, either Zeke or Rico Dowdle. If you like the two-round discount on Rico Dowdle, I think he's an average talent at best. But again, opportunity can trump talent in a one-year sprint. And we just look at the way Mike McCarthy's been talking about this running back room and that they're going to be in the committee, uh, whether it's two or whether it's three. To be honest with you, the players will determine that. On Rico Dowdle, he said he's definitely one of the lead guys in the room. And per the Coach Speak Index, McCarthy has a 90% reliability rating on depth chart Coach Speak. So we should probably take him for his word. So Rico Dowdle is definitely a guy worth drafting, in my opinion, as is Braylon Allen, the kid out of Wisconsin. He is this thundering, huge, massive running back that has pretty much locked up the RB2 role. I don't want to get crazy about his preseason week one performance. He looked great. He was running dudes over. He is a much shiftier back than given credit for, given his you know 235 pound size. And this is a, a pretty interesting tweet from Adam Leviton. He went 186 for 1,268 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns as a 17-year-old freshman at Wisconsin. Braylon Allen is so young. I believe he will be the youngest player in the NFL when he steps foot on the football field this upcoming September. Jets beat reporters have said that he's the clean RB2 behind Brees for months now. Do I think Braylon Allen will get a ton of work in the regular season? Not really. Maybe he'll get some short yardage stuff. Maybe he'll mix in like five, six, seven carries per game. It's nothing standalone value that I think you can really do much with. But the great part about this being on ESPN is that players like Brees Hall and players like Bijan running backs get pushed up really significantly. So if you end up drafting Brees Hall with your first round pick, Braylon Allen is going significantly lower in the running back rankings on ESPN. So if you draft on ESPN and you take Brees Hall, Braylon Allen, I think he is atop the list of handcuffs in fantasy football this year. If he goes down, this is going to be a Jets team that looks to establish the run. I, Aaron Rodgers, cool, great arm, great prime, elite when he was elite. I don't think they're looking to run the offense through Aaron Rodgers. It's going to be the Brees Hall show. It's going to be the running back show. More particularly, uh, they're going to win with defense. Aaron Rodgers is going to be efficient, but realistically, he has Garrett Wilson and no one really else to throw the ball to. So I think the running backs are going to be heavily involved. So if something does happen to Brees Hall, Braylon Allen could be a league winner. Moving on down the list, we have Devon Achan. Uh, Braylon Allen, Devon Achan, the next two guys are all five running back ranking spots higher on high stakes leagues than they are on ESPN. And again, if you are drafting on Yahoo, we're going to be doing the same exact video tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Devon Chan, there's nothing new that I could tell you that I haven't already yapped about all summer. This is just an explosive Miami team. Uh, Devon Chan is about as explosive as a running back in the history of planet Earth. So I'm trying not to overthink this one. A lot of people are worried about his injuries. I'm worried about every running back's injuries. But if he gets more of a workload, which he should going into his sophomore season, then he should break fantasy football more realistically, okay? What are they going to do on the goal line? I will say I definitely have concerns with some of the situation here, right? Raheem Mostert is still there. Raheem Mostert will probably play a good chunk of snaps every single week for the Dolphins. Raheem Mostert could be the goal line back there. I mean, the man scored 18 rushing touchdowns last year. If it ain't broke, do not fix it is kind of the way I'm looking at this offense for Miami. And then we talk about the run blocking line. You know, one of the great tools that we have in our draft guide is the tiebreaker matrix, which helps you look at like 
clean stats like this uh, where we have the offensive line rank for every team. And Miami's offensive line, after losing Robert Hunt to Carolina and, and losing Connor Williams, is ranked 28th going into the year. Okay, whereas if you're trying to decide between him and like Isaiah Pacheco, you could see that Pacheco has the seventh ranked offensive line. So he's going to be running behind a Kansas City line that will open up a lot of holes. Whereas Bonnie Chan is explosive, sure, but if there aren't a lot of holes, we could see some problems where he's getting hit in the backfield really, really often. And that is a concern for me as it relates to Devon Achan. That being said, though, the high stakes players are looking for upside. And when you talk about upside, man, you cannot talk about it without talking about Devon Achan. Najee Harris is the next guy up on this list. And I just wanted to throw this in there. As I mentioned with the draft guide, that is live right now. You could see all those tiebreaker matrix stats within it. That is available for full price at bdge.co. It's got all of our rankings for full PPR, standard, half PPR, uh, super flex, one quarterback leagues. It's got our must draft players, our all fade list, our favorite sleepers. Uh, it's got everything that you need for your fantasy football draft. So full price on bdge.co. But the single best way to get it the least expensive way is just go to underdog fantasy app all right so download the app the link will be in the description if you use our code bdge bdge when you deposit ten dollars for the first time on underdog you're going to get access email to you absolutely free for our draft guide for the entire summer which updates daily uh, our rankings and everything updates throughout the entire summer You'll also be able to bet on the slip that I'm going to give you at the end of this video, and you'll be able to draft on Underdog, which is one of the high stakes leagues on this video that I'm referring to. Okay, The single best way to really prepare for your draft is to be drafting on these platforms so that you know it becomes muscle memory at that point, saying like, okay, this guy's available here. He probably shouldn't be. So in your home league, you know exactly what guys you should be targeting. All right, So it's a three-pronged discount. All right? Underdog Fantasy app. Use our code BDGE when you deposit $10.00. You get draft guide, you could take the bet tonight, and you could also draft on a high stakes platform. It's literally the best deal in fantasy football. So Najee Harris, I've talked about him in basically every video. You guys know how much I love the Pittsburgh run game this year. Their entire offense is going to go through Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. I like both of them. And listen, I'm not arguing that Najee Harris is more talented than Jalen Warren because I actually don't even believe that in my heart of hearts. I think Warren's a better player. He's more explosive. He's more fun. But they're just not going to give Warren more touches than Najee Harris. Najee Harris is going to be the goal line back. Najee Harris is running behind a much improved offensive line with back-to-back first-round picks, as well as a second and a fourth-round pick. And Darnell Washington playing on the line often because they're going to run a lot of two tight end sets with Arthur Smith. There was a podcast I listened to recently from The Athletic where they're doing previews for all the divisions, and they did the AFC North and – one of the guys, I can't remember the co-host who was it, I, and I respect The Athletic a lot. I think everybody who comes on those on those pieces of content like brings it and brings their A-game and they don't fuck around there. One guy said he projected his, his bold take for this division is that Najee Harris will lead the NFL in rushing by 200 yards. It was fucking out of pocket, but listen, if we can confirm our biases, you love to hear it. So I'm just going to throw that in there for y'all. I'll also link that podcast episode down below. The next running back up on this list is Chuba Hubbard. I love it. I love that the high stakes players are drafting him above ESPN for many reasons. I've talked a lot about Jonathan Brooks and my affinity to the fact that I don't think he's going to have an impact this year as a guy who suffered a torn ACL and didn't have surgery until December, and they're easing him back in extremely slowly. I made a video earlier this summer that was, you know, predicting the cheapest RB ones in fantasy football, and I basically looked at every running back getting picked from RB20 down to RB50 and gave them a score from 1 to 10, how likely it is that they can finish as an RB1. I remember it was a bunch of like really low scores, and then Chuba was all the way down at like RB51, and he was like one of my highest-ranked players in that zone of running backs for this exact reason that, you know, if you've listened to any of my videos this summer, we were on the Brooks fade way before it became cool and popular now. But just to back that up a little bit more... Two podcasts I really suggest you guys listen to. ETR, Establish the Run, just did a injury podcast with Stefania Bell, who does the ESPN injury analysis. She came on and basically echoed what I've been saying all offseason. She does not have a lot of hope for Jonathan Brooks being a factor this year. And then there is a podcast series being done by Adam Chernoff called The Simple Handicap, where he's interviewing a beat reporter from every single team this offseason. And literally today, as you're watching this, he dropped the Panthers one, which is perfect timing. And he and the, the Panthers beat reporter was talking up Chuba. 
tremendously and was like, Chuba's going to get a ton of work. Chuba's going to lead the backfield in touches. Chuba's looked really, really, really good throughout camp so far. So if you want to hear more of what I've been echoing to you guys so that you can hear someone professional also yap it to you, those would be two episodes that, again, will be linked in the show notes below that I would absolutely take a listen to. And the last guy up on this list is Josh Jacobs. And that was actually surprising. I would expect a guy like Josh Jacobs to be much higher on the ESPN platform, but anyone that's been drafting him higher, uh, I would say the biggest takeaway from this weekend was Marshawn Lloyd's hamstring injury, which is a really big deal because he had been dealing with like both hip and hamstring soreness throughout training camp, and now he re-injured that hamstring in their preseason game. And that's mid-August hamstring strains are like a no-no for me. They're an absolute stay away. And if he misses time, this lingers into the season. He's less than 100%. He ends up re-injuring it in the season. That's just going to mean way more work for Josh Jacobs. So Jacobs was a dude that I was like pretty cool on coming into the year because I thought Marshawn Lloyd was really going to push him for like third down work, pass catching work. But if Lloyd has issues as a rookie right away, Jacobs is going to see a monster workload out of the gate in a very, very good offense. So Jacobs, I absolutely agree that you should be jumping over your league mates for him. So those are the eight running backs that you've got to snipe your idiot league mates on on ESPN. I agreed with, I think, seven of the eight of them. The only one I'm like, eh, whatever about was Ray Davis. But we have Chase Brown, Ray Davis, Rico Dowdle, Braylon Allen, Devon A. Chan, Najee Harris, Chuba Hubbard, Josh Jacobs. Now let's talk about tonight's favorite bet. I'm making this slip on Underdog Fantasy. So again, if you sign up, code BDGE, they're going to hit you with a deposit bonus up to 250 bucks. So you, so you could also take this line. And it is Joe Milton higher than 69 and a half passing yards. Okay. So here's the reason I like Joe Milton other than his fucking ridiculous arm strength and the fact that he could probably hit this line and basically one throw. The... Athletic basically had a beat reporter from every camp come out and do 53-man roster projections after their first preseason game. And the Patriots one came out, and they left Bailey Zappi off, which means it'll be Jacoby, Drake May, and Joe Milton as their quarterback. What that tells me is there is still a battle for the QB3 role, but Milton has that job, which means they're probably going to want to see a decent portion of him in this preseason game, just to make sure that they're making the right decision there. Drake May is supposedly going to play more than last week. Uh, they have his lineup at 78 and a half, but he only played six snaps last week. So I don't think that that is a very high bar. I really don't see him playing more than like two drives. Uh, and then I think Joe Milton will get at least a quarter, maybe a full half to himself to really prove that he's the QB three in this quarterback room. So I love that line. Joe Milton against Philly tonight, 69 and a half passing yards. You could tell that on underdog. You do have to make two plays to make a slip on underdog. If you want to see my other play with this, if you want to see all my plays throughout the summer as well as in the season, you could track all my bets on Pickett. Pickett is this phenomenal fucking app. You download it. It's absolutely free. The first time you get on there, if you use our code BDGE, you don't have to deposit anything. It will give you up to $100 for free for no, no reason that you could just take out of your account immediately. Plus, you'll be able to see all of my bets. OK, so go download the Picket app. That will be linked down below. Click it, pick it, download it. See who I am pairing with Joe Milton higher than 69 and a half passing yards. All right. I will leave you with that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new here and you want to see the Yahoo version of this video. I'm out of here. Smoochies.